no matter how good your mask is, you're not going to be able to take a warm image shot against a warm background and transport it into a cool background without having some edge problems, no matter what. You just cannot do that good of a job with a mask. It's just not possible. So you are going to have to do a little extra work to make the foreground subject match its new background. And in this case, I'm going to take advantage of a command that we have not seen so far, which was introduced in Photoshop CS in the previous version of Photoshop called Match Color. Now, I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so that we can actually see the image that we're trying to match. The Match Color command, what it does is it takes the active layer inside the image and matches it either to a different layer inside the image or to a different image entirely. So it matches these colors to those colors. To get to the command, I'm going to go up to the image menu, choose adjustments, and choose the match color command. I'd like you to do this as well, of course, to bring up this big old dialog box here that we haven't ever seen before and shall never see again inside this series. So this is our one opportunity to see one of the wackiest commands inside Photoshop. It's a pretty groovy command for masking purposes in that it allows us to match the colors inside the foreground image to a different background. However, it's really a lame-o construction. I've never really liked the way this command is put together. This dialog box is completely upside down. That is to say, the stuff that we start with is at the bottom of the dialog box, and the stuff we end with is up here at the top of the dialog box. Now, we're currently working on the Brian and me layer here, which is layer one, as it tells me, up at the top of the dialog box. And this is the layer that we're going to be modifying. We need to then set the source of the color modification. So in other words, what layer or image do we want to match? And I'll go ahead and choose from the source pop-up menu. I'll choose with landscape. We don't want to match Mike and Leo, that other image, because this layer already does match that image. After all, it came from that image. I'm going to go ahead and choose with landscape. And for the layer that we want to match, I'm going to choose background. We want to go ahead and match the background layer, which is the original landscape image here. And notice, just like that, we go ahead and perform a match. Look how good that is. It's done a great job of matching the colors in the background. It's just that, you know, the way it's set up, I don't care for very much. And if you want to compare the before and after versions of the image, let me drag this over to the other side here so that we can see it. You can turn on and off the preview checkbox. So this is what the colors look like before, and this is what the colors look like after I match them to the background. It's a pretty darn good match. Not only matches the colors, makes the colors cooler, but it also matches the luminosity values. In other words, it makes the image darker. And it does so while retaining basically the same relative colors inside the image. And in other words, Brian's face is still a fleshy color. His hat is still sort of a blue color. It just does a great job of matching those colors to the background. So we're all cool together. And we look like we belong against this new background. So that's a groovy thing. There are a few other changes I'm going to make. I do want to fade the changes. In other words, I don't want them to be as strong as they are. I don't want these color modifications to go quite as extreme as they've gone so far. And so I'm going to fade the modification. Another thing I don't like about the construction of this dialog box is even though it's got this fade option, just like the fade command, and it performs the exact same function, it allows you to fade the modification, it's expressed in an inverse fashion. So zero is not faded, and 100 is all the way faded. So it's exactly the opposite. Anyway, we're going to set it to 50. So I want you to change this value to 50%. So we have about a 50-50 blend of the match color modifications along with the original colors inside this image. And I might bump up the luminance value to make us a little lighter. And I might also take down the color intensity just a smidgen so that we're going to reduce the saturation value. So new terms for everything inside this wacky dialog box. So good effects, good modifications made, wacky construction. Once you get more or less these settings on your screen, then go ahead and click OK in order to accept those changes.